What is going on, guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about Throne and Liberty, which is a game that is out right now in its early access kind of period uh, if you purchase it, but it will be free for everyone starting in just a few days on October the 1st. Now, this is a game that is an MMO that has been out overseas for the last year and is now just about to come out here in the United States on new gen consoles so your xbox series s and x ps5 and of course pc like i said the game does come out on october the first so here in just a few days it is cross play but there is an option to disable cross play if you are on playstation and that is for playstation only so if you're on pc or xbox that is not going to be uh, an option for you there but you can go in and kind of select the server when you start the game uh, that you want to play in and if you are on playstation there is an option to play on playstation only this is a big game with a lot of stuff uh coming to it and some things you know have been added since the beta some things are going to be added in the future so i'm, I'm going to kind of go go over the stuff that um, you know that i know about i may miss some things so if i do you can definitely leave those down in the comment section been playing the game for you know several hours and it seems like it's going to be a pretty interesting game as long as the developers stay with it now, it is a game that does concern some people and myself for some reasons, but we'll get into that here in just a second. Uh, character customization is really good. It is only limited to human characters, but it is a very good system, and I really do enjoy uh, the customization itself. Uh, it's very in-depth, and you also can upload a picture of yourself into the game if you would like to do that. And then it will kind of develop that character to look like the photo you uploaded. So that is something uh, very neat. Of course, you can transform in-game. What I mean by that, and I'll talk a little bit about that a little more here in a second. But you can transform into, you know, a land kind of uh, maybe animal, uh, something in the water or in the air. And that is kind of how you traverse the terrain. You're not going to have your normal traditional mount. You will just transform into this you know being and that's kind of how you move around the map which is very unique and very enjoyable this game does offer pve and pvp um, it seems to be like it's going to be a very pve and pvp focused game so no matter what you enjoy you're going to definitely have something to do on either kind of you know uh, or either kind of aspect of that so if you're a pve fan there's going to be plenty of things and if you're a pvp fan there's going to be plenty of things and it does seem like there is enough story here for solo players as well. Right now, the server uh, capacity seems to be around 3,000 to 5,000 players per server. Like I said, there's a lot of different server options you can choose from. Uh, different server locations, of course, based on where you live. Uh, if you're playing with friends, now you're going to have to be in the same server, of course. But that party uh, max right now seems to be around six players from what I have seen. And when I talked about player transformation, players being able to move around or tra traverse kind of the area is going to be uh, an important factor in the game for player movement throughout, you know, like I said, you know, the map itself, whether it be land, water, or air. And that is a very unique thing. You can change into, you know, something where you can run on the land, a uh, lion, for example, uh, maybe an eagle in the air, an otter in the water. So it's, it's very unique compared to some other games when you have mounts. So it's pretty enjoyable. There's also three pillars of the open world, which they break down into environment, events, and memorials. Environment acts, uh, the kind of aspect relates to grappling, gliding, and traversing area, uh, areas. It also kind of refers to day and night cycles, weather cycles. So you will ha have rain, wind, that kind of thing in the game, which does change the gameplay from what I understand. What I have been reading about myself is saying there's some ways that you can enter maybe certain parts of the map when it's not raining. And if it is raining, you won't be able to get to that area because of the rain. So that is something that is pretty unique. Also events uh, kind of tied to regional, the regional area would be events where players could, for example, like wolf tail, where you can uh, collect and turn in wolf tails. And there's going to be a leaderboard that is kind of PVP and in, uh, involved. There's also world bosses and events around the map uh, that are going to be considered, you know, those regional or, you know, kind of events on the map itself. Uh, guild occupation, guild wars, those are also events. And memorials are server-wide events that will change the server as players contribute to them and switch to the new phase over time. Also, when it comes to, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in this game, so I may miss a few things. But I just want to kind of hit the high notes, things that I have been noticing myself. Uh, your class is going to be based on your weapon choice. 
Uh, this kind of is similar to some maybe other games you have played before where you have two different weapons equipped. You can dual uh, wield and mix and match weapon sets to make your own unique class. So you might want to use, maybe if you want to be a mage, you could use a staff and a wand. Or maybe you decided you want to use a staff and a bow. Or maybe a bow and a sword. There's different ways you can mix and match your uh, play style for DPS, healing, and tanking. Because that's going to all be an option. Uh, they said that they wanted to have this game be more story involved in some of the other MMOs, of course, the developers had made before. But they also wanted that story to be optional for players that don't care about story. So there is a good story there. Uh, you know, a lot of hours you can put into that. So if you're a solo player, that's definitely something for you. Or if you're someone that likes PvP or maybe group PvE content, there's definitely a, a way that, you know, you don't have to be too focused on that story to be able to get to that part of the game as well. Also, there's uh, fishing, cooking, and player-owned housing that was shown off in a developer stream a couple months ago. Like I said, all of this may not be in the game, you know, right off the bat. We may get some of this stuff added in later on, but uh, there's going to be things like that. There's also, you know, you can go out and scavenge and pick up, you know, you know, plants and stuff like that. I'm sure more of that kind of stuff is going to be added down the road. Uh, right now, we do have a max level of 70 is what I know of. It may be higher than that right now, uh, but that was the last thing that I saw. I'm sure that will be increased as well. Now, the one thing that does concern me and a lot of other people is kind of that pay-to-win aspect. Uh, the developers have been known for that. A lot of those uh, Asian companies that make these games, you know, whether it be Korean, Japanese, uh, make a lot of uh, pay-to-win style games. They did say they wanted to calm that down so it's not as prevalent in this game as it you know is in some of the other games that are out there that they may that they may make but it's still a thing uh there's going to be people that can go in and actually purchase stuff and you know be stronger than your character be built up quicker if you're not going to buy things and you just want to play it because it's a free to play game you can definitely do that uh but it's going to be a bit of a grind you're going to have to put some time in for farming and stuff like that but if you're a person that enjoys those style of mmos anyway that's really not going to be a, that big of a deal but it does have that kind of feel like Guild Wars, uh, Neverwinter, uh, kind of that target-based combat. Combat's very enjoyable, being able to mix and match kind of your weapon styles. And I'm definitely looking forward to putting some more hours into this game. So far, I've been really enjoying it. And I'm hoping it's something that developers will continue to support going forward. Uh, we'll kind of have to see, of course, since this is a game that has come from, like I said, uh, you know, overseas, uh, Amazon Games is working on it here. So that's something that I'm hoping that they will continue to support. They've had not a great track record in the past of supporting their games, uh, but hopefully they will with this. Now we do have a new, the new world a kind of expansion there is coming out. It's going to be coming to console as well. So it's kind of interesting that they're having both of these games come out this close kind of together in a time frame to me. But I really did enjoy so far my time with Throne and Liberty. Will the pay to win aspect be a kind of killer in the end? We'll have to wait and see. Um, that does destroy a lot of games, even the games we don't see here MMO wise that may, you know, be very popular overseas. Uh, a lot of times that is kind of the killer for those games. You know, it's a lot of pay to win and people decide not to kind of step away from that, but being on console or new gen, you know, consoles and PC being able to play cross, uh, cross play. I think this game that de definitely has a chance, uh, for MMO fans here in the U S. Um, and I think it's something if handled correctly, Throne in Liberty could be a great MMO to play for years to come. It's going to kind of just be uh, kind of depending on the developers and how they want to handle everything going forward, how they want to handle issues of, once again, like I said, that pay to win kind of stuff, and how they want to handle, you know, just your general game complaints and, you know, all kind of stuff that can happen with inside of an MMO. But overall, so far, fingers crossed, has been very enjoyable, and I hope it continues to be enjoyable in the future. Because as you all know, if you're a, a fan of the channel and you watch, you know, a lot of my videos, I'm a big fan of all kinds of games. But when it comes to, you know, a lot of things that I play here on the channel, I do play a lot of the Elder Scrolls Online. I've been a big fan of RPG games, MMO games, first person shooters. But overall, I was really looking for something else to play besides maybe just ESO. And those kind of games are always enjoyable to me to do content with. So I'm hoping Throne and Liberty will, you know, have a good future. So... You know, be something else I could bring here to the channel. And hopefully, uh, so far, I have really enjoyed it. And hopefully, it will continue to be something I can enjoy uh, going, you know, kind of forward into the future. So, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know if you've tried it yet or if you're looking forward to trying Throne and Liberty when it's released for free 
on October the 1st. Let me know what platform you're going to be playing on. So far, I've not had a whole lot of issues on PS5. But, you know, I heard, I've half heard complaints from console and PC players alike with, you know, some issues. But leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.